Hi everybody, I hope you're having a fabulous day. So I am back with another jewelry haul. Uh, I have some really wonderful antique pieces this time that I'm excited to share with you. So we're gonna get right into it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of my favorite items on the tray here. It's actually this beautiful little hand-painted brooch. It is this gorgeous little angel. You can see the brush strokes and the detail in the painting here, and I just think it's beautiful. And surrounding it are little faceted pieces of cut steel. Isn't she gorgeous? If we flip it over to the back, you can see that it's actually painted on mother of pearl. So I think that is so beautiful. Uh, you can see all the little rivets uh, where the cut steel pieces were fastened onto the bezel here. And we have a little tube hinge and a C clasp. And I just really love this tiny little piece. I think she's absolutely gorgeous. And I know that cut steel was very popular in the Georgian era, so I don't know if this piece is Georgian or maybe more of an early Victorian piece. I would love to know what you think uh, based on the cut steel and the fact that it's painted on mother of pearl. I'm not quite sure, but I love these hand-painted pieces. I think they're beautiful, these little miniature works of art. And I was very intrigued by the fact that it had this cut steel border. Uh, and that it might be a bit older um, than the Victorian pieces that I usually find. So really beautiful piece. Very, very happy to add it to my collection. And then another hand-painted brooch that I picked up is this one here. And as you can see, it is not in the best condition, unfortunately, but I still thought it was worth grabbing. It was priced very low and it does, I do think I could clean up some areas. I think that there is just some residue up top and actually her face really isn't all that bad. There's a few scratches right through the edge of her face and on the veil there. The worst is on the bodice of her dress here, but, but you can still see some really beautiful details. I love the way her hand is painted. I love her face. And truthfully, I picked this up as kind of a project piece. I am hoping to do some very, very minor, I mean very minor uh, restoration to this. Um, I studied painting and illustration. That's what my degree is in. So I picked this up as, I don't know, something I wanted to test my skills on eventually. I don't know when I'm going to do that. I need to figure out the correct materials, get the right supplies. But I think with just a teeny bit of restoration on the bodice of her dress and just like a dot of the dark color around her hair and face, um, I might be able to make this visually feel less damaged. That's my plan. Uh, we'll see if I end up doing that. I may just keep it as is because I still think she's beautiful, but I did pick it up with the intention to try and restore it slightly. And I know that you really have to be, you have to have a light hand with these things. I certainly wouldn't want to repaint her face or anything like that. I would just want to fill in a few of the teeny spots where there's paint loss um, and really not, not touch any of the other areas. So we'll see if I end up doing that. Um, here is what the back looks like. It is painted on porcelain, and we have our long pin and tube hinge there. And I believe this one is Victorian, um, just based on based on the hinge and the style. But let me know what you think. Okay, and then the final hand-painted brooch that I found over the past few weeks is this really gorgeous gold-filled or possibly rolled gold frame. And it has this little scene, like a countryside scene. And I thought it was really beautiful. It's kind of subtly done. You can see two tiny figures standing up in the front here, kind of gazing out over this vista, this little lake and tree line. And I just thought it was really gorgeous and the price was right. <laughs> I definitely am looking for, for the deals when I'm searching for these pieces. Uh, they certainly can be pricey um, when you're looking online. Here is what the back of this piece looks like. I like that it still had its little safety chain attached. Yeah, the painting on this one really is in beautiful condition. I don't really see any damage to it and a beautiful little scene, I thought. And then I found a little collection of stone brooches that I believe are all agate. Um, so this first one here is a really large oval rectangular shaped brooch. You can see it has these beautiful bands in the stone. And here's what the back looks like. I believe this one is set in sterling. It is not marked anywhere, but it does have that Victorian hinge and C-clasp, and I just thought it was really beautiful, nice and large, kind of an interesting one, I thought. Maybe I'll just grab all three of these other stone brooches that I found, and I thought these were all really, really beautiful. Um, this tiny one, I think, is probably the newest of the three, 
But look at how beautiful the stone is. And I'm sorry that there's a reflection. We're sitting in front of a window, but it has this really beautiful, almost cranberry red purple color with this translucent kind of milky, almost opalescent stone surrounding it. And I believe this is a type of moss agate, uh, but in a red tone. And I think it is gorgeous. Here is what the back looks like. I also believe that this one is sterling, uh, but just a really beautiful stone. Really, really liked that one. And then this one is similar in that it has that clear kind of milky stone with tiny little spots of other colors throughout it. And I just thought it was a beautiful stone again. This one sits up pretty high. I just thought it was a really interesting stone specimen and a really beautiful one. And then there's this piece, which is another banded agate. But you can see that there are two tiny cracks in the stone, unfortunately. Uh, but look at how beautiful the color banding is in this one. And this one is a nice large size. Here is what the back of this one looks like. So yeah, unfortunate that there are tiny cracks, but it doesn't bother me too much. I still think it's a beautiful and wearable piece. You know, and I think these pieces all together make a really beautiful collection. I have a few other agate and stone brooches that I have displayed all together. And so I'm really excited to add these to those. I think these are really, really gorgeous. And then I also found two carved shell cameos. Now this one is not in a setting, unfortunately, but look at how beautiful this cameo is. You have this female figure with a swan. I think this is Leda and the swan from mythology. You guys correct me if you know differently, but I believe I've seen this, this image before. And I just thought it was gorgeous. I love the shape of the swan, kind of the movement of the piece. You've got this sort of circular pattern as your eye moves across it. And I just think it's gorgeous. So, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I am not a jeweler. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to set these pieces, but I thought this was worth saving and really, really beautiful. The cameo is in excellent condition. So if I ever find, you know, an empty <laughs> setting or a jeweler who would be willing to set this into a brooch or a pendant, um, I think that would be wonderful. But for now, it's just going to stay in my cameo collection. And then I found this little carved shell cameo. So this one is in a gold tone setting. And I do think this is a later piece, just judging on, you know, the pin and the setting that it's in. Um, but still a really beautiful one. And I thought it was interesting because if you look at it from the side, look at how domed <laughs> this shell is. Uh, just kind of an interesting shape and interesting that they were able to still make a really recognizable face when you look at it from the front, despite it being curved so dramatically. So I just thought it was interesting and um, wanted to pick this one up. Kind of a cool one, I thought. Oh yes, and this stunning, stunning crescent moon brooch. I absolutely love this. So you have these gorgeous faceted white rhinestones. I believe they're just glass or paste. Um, here is what the back looks like. You have a tube hinge and a C clasp on a gold tone metal. Uh, really, really beautiful. I like the size of this one. And it's really, the stones are in really beautiful condition. There's no dead stones. They're really not yellowed. They're really bright and sparkly. And I love this piece. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And then this one was an exciting find. I've been recently learning more about mourning jewelry and the different types that were used throughout history. And this one is a mourning ring. So you can see that it has this little pane of glass or crystal with some plaited hair underneath it. Uh, most likely set in a gold filled or rolled gold setting. The band of this ring here is hallmarked. Um, it's hallmarked for 18 karat, but I don't think this is a solid 18 karat band. I need to test it. Um, and I almost think that this piece, the hair locket piece, was added to this band later. So you can see that there are some solder marks where these little beads are fixed to the band. And this is actually a fairly large size ring. I want to say this is maybe an eight and a half. So I, I almost think that somebody re-soldered this piece onto a band at a later time in order to be able to wear it comfortably. That's my guess. Um, I don't know for sure. And I need to do some research on these hallmarks. Don't know if you're going to be able to make them out here, but you can see it says 18. There is a W, which I know references a year. So I'm going to have to look that up. My instinct is that this top piece is maybe a bit earlier than the band of the ring. But in any case, I think it is gorgeous. I think it's such a beautiful piece of history and I really am fascinated with uh, these morning jewelry pieces. And I was really excited to find this one 
at a good price uh, to add to my collection. Oh yeah, uh, now this one's really fun. This is a, definitely a departure in style from all the other pieces, but I found this gorgeous little dragon's breath glass ring and it is set in sterling silver. It's marked sterling on the back here. And this one is a really tiny size. Uh, definitely would be a pinky ring for me, but beautiful pieces of dragon's breath glass probably native made just based on the design and the florals on the sides there. Really, really gorgeous. This reminds me very much of a ring I purchased from Kirsten over at Kirsten Red Resale. This is sort of like the baby to uh, that ring. That ring is a little bit larger, has oval shaped stones, but has the same three stone style. I thought it was fun to find sort of the baby or the little sister <laughs> version of that ring, uh, but really, really beautiful piece. I think this is a size four. So a tiny size, but beautiful. And here is a really interesting locket that I found. It has this gorgeous flower etched onto the front of it. The back side is just plain, but what is interesting to me is that this is a slide locket. So these pieces do not hinge. Uh, they are two separate pieces that just kind of hang over top of one another. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting design. These pieces do not have their glass or like a little plastic cover that probably would have originally been in them. But you certainly could fit a photo onto each side of this and replace that little plastic sleeve. Uh, but really, really beautiful. I think this is gold filled. In fact, I think the chain is marked. Yeah, the chain up on the clasp is marked for gold filled. It's gonna be hard to see, but I believe the chain and pendant are both gold filled and really, really beautiful. And here's a really fun piece. So this is a large sash pin. It's done in brass and you have um, the grapes and the leaves and all the florals beautifully detailed. Um, and then you have this really interesting glass stone, which I think is meant to imitate turquoise. It's kind of interesting because it has this sort of gray metallic piece inside of the glass stone, which I do think is intentional. I think it's meant to replicate turquoise, interestingly enough. Uh, but let me know if you know differently. Uh, here's what the back of this piece looks like. Really interesting, nice, large piece. I just really loved the detail in all of the etching and these applied grapes and grape leaf. And here we have a sterling silver with rose gold details. It is in the shape of a sword or a dagger. And then you have leaves and florals on the blade. Really beautiful. And this one is hallmarked on the back. Again, I haven't done research on the hallmarks yet. In fact, half of these pieces that you're seeing today uh, just arrived in the mail today. A lot of them are purchased online. So I was just excited to have received them and wanted to film this video. So I've not done all the research on these pieces yet, uh, but a really beautiful, nice size, antique sterling and rose gold piece. I just like the motif of this. That dagger is kind of interesting. I thought it was really cool. And look at this little tiny sterling silver bird and floral pin. Kind of similar in style. You know, the flowers have a similar shape and little etching on them. So definitely of the same era, I think. But this has a tiny little swallow and three little flowers. And I just think it's really sweet. Um, this one has a different type of hinge though. So maybe this one is later, but it has a very similar type of etching happening on the, the front here. Really sweet, tiny little pin. And then I found this beautiful one. This one is iris glass, faceted in the center, uh, set into sterling. Here is what the back of this one looks like. And this one does have a marking. Yeah, I believe this one has a marking for 800 silver. So I think this one is a little bit later than some of the other brooches, but how beautiful. I love iris glass, and I thought this pin was very, very sweet. Now here's a beautiful brooch. So you have these three faceted oval shaped stones and it was sold to me as glass, but when I got it home, it is testing as citrine and they certainly look like citrine to me. They have that gorgeous kind of ambery yellow color, beautiful. And I think this one is Victorian. So you can see we have a tube hinge and C-clasp there, probably in a gold filled setting. Beautiful stones though. Should probably clean this one up a little bit. I think it would sparkle even more if I gave it a little bit of a bath, but really beautiful. And I was excited to find out that these were in fact natural stones. And then this is kind of an interesting piece. So I've seen these before, but this is my first time coming across one. And this is a little spinner fob. And one side is carnelian and the other side is bloodstone. 
So it's kind of this really deep green color with these little specks of red. Really beautiful. Again, I think this is probably gold filled or rolled gold. And this would have hung at the end of a fob or watch chain, I believe. Really interesting little piece. Um, I love that it's articulated like this and really nice size stones. The carnelian side is a little bit scratched up, but not too bad. Just thought it was an interesting and cool piece. I have a few watch chains that are missing um, sort of their ornaments, and I thought that this could work really well on one of those. This is kind of a fun one. I believe that this is Bakelite, so it's a little carved flower, and I do think it's an older one. So here is what the hinge looks like and the C-clasp. It definitely looks like an old clasp to me. But what a sweet little flower. I liked the color of it. It's almost like a reddish orange, kind of mirroring on brown, but really beautifully detailed and doesn't appear to be broken anywhere, which is nice. So I was excited to find this one. And then I found two Italian micro mosaic or mosaic pieces. And this first one here is this really beautiful filigreed brass. And you have these little panels with our floral inlays really gorgeous. It seems to be in really nice condition. I don't see any glass pieces missing. Um, I'll have to look at it a little bit closer. But here is what the back looks like. It is marked Italy on this center panel. Really beautiful piece, I thought. And then I also found this tiny little micro mosaic pill box or trinket box. I loved the color. It's sort of this deep teal color, which is one of my favorite colors, sort of a darker version of that Tiffany blue. And I love the pop of yellow and red and white. Just a really gorgeous design, I thought, on the front of this one. And it's a metal box. Definitely has a little bit of wear, but I don't, I don't mind that too much. It's really about this top panel here with these beautiful inlaid glass pieces. And then I've mentioned in some recent videos that I have been picking up celluloid. Um, it's something that I think is really interesting. I'm really interested in these vintage plastics um, and I've, it's something I'm learning about. And I found this little dog brooch and I believe that he is celluloid. I love how he's painted, how he has these little brown touches that just give him some dimension. I just thought he was really adorable. Here is what the pin looks like on the back. I definitely need to clean him up. This is one of the ones I received today and I've not cleaned or done research on, but he is so adorable. Excited to add this to my little celluloid collection. So cute. And this is kind of a strange thing, hairpins. And I just liked the advertising on it. They are in there and the seller has pulled one out so we could see what they are like, but they're these little bobby pins, uh, black bobby pins. And I just really liked this paper wrapping. I love the typeset on it, and I picked this up to use for display with some of my jewelry pieces and antique things. Just thought it was a sweet little thing and only a few dollars, so kind of a fun little piece. Then I found another piece of what I believe to be morning jewelry, and this is a linked chain. It's very lightweight, and you can see that these pieces have almost a brown tinge to them, so I believe that this is vulcanite. Um, here is how this clasp works. So I think that this little clasp and these rings were added later. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I think originally it probably would have had a vulcanite clasp that hooked on to the end link. That's my assumption here. This looks like it was added, but this clasp says nickels on it. So maybe I can do some research into that name. Maybe that is a maker that I could look up, but a really beautiful piece of morning jewelry and something I'm gonna to add to my collection. It's actually a really nice long length. And then I found a few pieces of interesting milk glass. So this bracelet is something I actually have had for a few years, and I always thought it was really cool and beautiful. But when I was out at an antique store this past weekend, I found the matching necklace. And I thought that was really interesting that they make a beautiful set. This one obviously is four rows while the necklace is three. And I found one more piece of milk glass. This one, again, only a few dollars. Milk glass seems to be priced um, really reasonably, but I really love it. I think it's a beautiful thing um, and it looks beautiful displayed all together, I think. But this one has these little dangle pieces. I like the little cone shaped beads as well. And it goes up to a little brass clasp. Probably could stand to be restrung and cleaned up a little bit, but I love the beads on this one. They're unique shapes and um, was excited to find that piece for a few dollars. Then I found this really cool 
Egyptian revival pendant and it's a really big piece and you have this scarab stone uh, it's a piece of ceramic set into this silver tone metal you have this little stylized lotus flower there and then these dangling pieces so these ones definitely have a little bit of wear that silver tone has come off the top but it doesn't bother me too much you have these little faux turquoise stones here is what the back looks like Definitely a costume piece, but a really fun costume piece, I thought. No maker on it, but I love scarabs, and I love this little ceramic one. Um, I know these are often referred to as faience. I don't know if this is an authentic piece of faience that was set into this costume piece. I have no idea, but really beautiful. I love the look of it. I think these Egyptian revival pieces are really, really fun. Oh, and I forgot. I brought this little button bracelet out. I rediscovered this in my collection recently, and I brought it... Um, after I picked up this beautiful brooch with our little cut steel pieces, I noticed that this is clearly a piece that somebody, you know, fixed their button collection to to wear as jewelry. But I noticed that there were two buttons that appear to have cut steel pieces on them. So this one is actually mother of pearl with a little cut steel flower. And then this one is all cut steel. And I was just curious to know if we thought that these were Georgian buttons, perhaps. You know, after finding this little piece and researching Georgian jewelry a bit further, um, I've discovered cut steel and I've been looking into that. I just happened to rediscover this bracelet. And yeah, I was just curious to know if you guys thought that that's what these were. Um, if I turn it around, you can see that this button has those kind of rivets, sort of like a cut off rivet on the back very similar to how the steel is set into this brooch. So yeah, I'd be interested to know what you guys think about this little, these little buttons. Uh, just kind of a fun piece to find. Okay, here is another area that I have a display of jewelry and I did pick up these two antique photographs this weekend. I just thought they were beautiful and they were $2 a piece, still in their little cases and beautiful for display. I also picked up this box here, which I thought was gorgeous. It has this embossed, almost leather-like covering on it. Um, I believe it was probably a hat box, but I just loved the look of it. And again, for display, I thought it was beautiful. So yeah, I think that is everything on the tray today. I'd love to know if you had a favorite piece or if you have more information about any of the pieces I've shared, uh, please leave me a comment. I would love to learn more. Um, I think I found some really wonderful pieces over the past few weeks and I'm really excited to add them to my collection. Obviously this tiny little hand-painted brooch is one of my favorites. The rhinestone crescent moon, amazing. And of course this little morning ring, I love it. I love this piece. I just love the history behind it. So many favorites out today. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful week and I will see you in the next one.